Hello everyone, I'm Melanie from Perfect Pelvic Floor. I'm looking forward to taking over the live for the next 15, 20 minutes. So please jump on. I'm just going to give everyone a little bit of time to jump on. I'm going to be talking about incontinence, bladder health, pelvic floor exercises, and of course, the vagina winks. So I look forward to chatting with you. While we wait, uh, anyone who's jumping on, I would love to know where you're from. So please just pop it in the comments and uh, then I can see where we are, which is amazing. I'll just give it a few more minutes. And please, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments, uh, either during the live or after, and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Okay. All right, let's get started. So as I said before, my name is Melanie. I am from Perfect Public Floor. I am a physiotherapist and I've been a physio for about 16 years. I've been blessed to work in multiple clinics with pelvic floor, with within women's health, with general musculoskeletal, even sports, and I've absolutely loved that too. Uh, and then I've been teaching Pilates for about 13 years as well. So loving the ver variety. Uh, and then I also uh, brought on board Perfect Pelvic Floor, mainly because as an early physio, I started getting lots of women come to me just really confused about what they could do, particularly pregnant women and new moms, and just really unsure what exercises they could do, what was safe for them. And it just made me start looking, finding some research and developing an exercise program for them so that uh, I knew they were being looked after and they, they were on top of what they could actually do to look after themselves. So that was my big, big um, point there. I just wanted to make sure they were being looked after. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, as it is in World Incontinence Week on the 19th of June, I'm here just to shed a little bit of light on the topic so that you can understand a little bit more and really to see that there's actually something you can do about it. So the incontinence uh, stats are pretty crazy. Uh, so urinary incontinence affects up to 38% of Australian women and up to 10% of Australian men. But the fact more alarming to me is that 70% of those who are suffering symptoms don't seek help, uh, which is really frustrating, I guess, because I know that there's so much that you can do. And that's what I'm here today to do, just to teach you what you can do and to show you that there's actually um, options for you so you don't have to suffer. Okay, so incontinence. So we're going to be talking about the different types of incontinence. So we have stress incontinence which is uh, where you're getting that involuntary urine leakage uh, due to high impact activities. So things that cause intra-abdominal pressure, so an increase in that, which is basically pressure coming downwards within your abdominal cavity, making your pelvic floor muscles and everything underneath having to work a little bit harder. And sometimes you have too much pressure going down and it causes some leakage. So things like running, jumping, coughing, sneezing, laughing, et cetera, uh, can actually cause some of that. And I know you're thinking, yeah, there is no way you'd get me on a trampoline right now. Well, that's where it comes from. So that's your stress incontinence. And then we have urge incontinence, which is where you get this sort of sudden, you know, overwhelming desire to need to urinate. Uh, and even though your bladder might not be very full as well, so you typically will then go to the bathroom and not much comes out. Uh, or it, um, you find yourself just going more frequently without, without having a full bladder. So that's sort of your urge incontinence, the two different types. So one big question I have for you, do you think that just a little bit of leakage, you know, some droplets or just not quite making it to the bathroom in time, does that still classify as incontinence? Well, the answer is yes, it does. And I think Given that fact, I feel like those stats of the 70% not seeking help actually would be a lot larger, um, given that I think it um, affects a lot more than what we actually think. So there is 100% absolutely something you can do about it. So you might have heard of obviously the happy bladder, which I am super pumped to try that with a few of my clients. Um, I can't wait to do that. But along with that, you've also got your pelvic floor exercises. Now, they have a lot of really good research to show that they are still the first line of treatment. They are effective in reducing prolapse symptoms, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. 
and they're effective in treating incontinence and actually helping you um, become stronger and have healthy pelvic floor because that's what we're all about. So when I talk about pelvic floor, I have gone down the line of really trying to teach people how to control and coordinate their pelvic floor. Now, what does that even mean? <laughs> that means being able to activate the muscles when you need to and relax them when you need to, uh, because they shouldn't be on all the time, but they do need to work at times. Uh, so we need to know when to relax, when not to, and actually how to do that. So I call that the control of your muscles um, and having pelvic floor health. Okay, so that is my philosophy. The other part of it is the connection, which is the hard part. I, I get asked so many times, well, how do I do it? How do I know if I'm doing it right? The biggest part is actually getting the connection of your brain and your muscles working. And that's different for everyone. And that can feel different for everyone. So if you haven't done it already, when you're starting pelvic floor exercises, which I will go through a couple with you, I want you to really take the time to become aware of the body, think about it, focus on the area and connect to those muscles so that they're really working. Okay, so that's sort of the biggest takeaway for today. All right, so when you're starting out pelvic floor exercises, you want, as a female, first I'm going to speak female, you really want to be focusing on the vaginal wall, so the inside lining of the vagina. You want to be focusing on there, imagining that area, trying to connect to that area, and you want to feel like those muscles are closing and lifting. So our pelvic floor is shaped a little bit like a hammock or a sling running from your pubic bone at the front right through to the tailbone at the back. So it's sort of shaped a little bit like a curve and it's the base of the pelvis, hence it's the pelvic floor. And what those muscles do, and any muscle in particular, when you are contracting those muscles or using them, they are shortening. So when you shorten something in that position, you're getting a closing shut of the vaginal canal and a lifting sensation. So you're wanting to activate a squeezing shut and a lifting. That's sort of what we're going for in regards to the pelvic floor for today. So... As part of that, we're also going to work through the diaphragm because your diaphragm sits at the base of the lungs. It's breathing out really wide into your rib cage, slow, deep breaths, and your pelvic floor and your diaphragm really work together as you inhale and exhale. So it's really important to actually work through the breath when you are doing your pelvic floor exercises. Uh, so I'm going to go through the vagina wink with you. So this is a pretty funny little exercise but one I love because a, it makes you laugh it makes you smile you're going what is that um, and secondly it's um it's very effective so it's one of the first exercises I give to try and help people connect to their muscles to activate but because you're going 100% on with intensity you're also going 100% off with intensity so it's teaching you how to relax the muscle as well it's uh, secondly, well, thirdly, it's actually um, great for enhancing arousal because when you are doing these quick winking, pulsating actions of the pelvic floor, you're actually stimulating your clitoris, which can enhance arousal levels. And it's a big reason why I give this exercise to women who are either endo sufferers or, sufferers or just having some problems with um, painful sex. So it can help you A, increase the arousal levels and then B, help you to relax when you actually need to. So that's when I give this exercise out. It's a start of our Perfect Pelvic Floor programs, uh, which is our functional exercise Pilates style programs. And it's one of the first exercises to just get that connection going. Okay, so we're gonna go through that now. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, you're trying to focus on the vaginal walls, thinking about where the pelvic floor muscles are. You're going to squeeze and lift those muscles on as much as you can and then off as much as you can. You're gonna squeeze and lift on and off. Ideally going for sort of one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. Now, if you're sitting down, you might actually get some kind of sensation of a lifting and then of a dropping down. Okay, so that's how you know if you're doing it right. Just trying to get that lifting and dropping down. Obviously no tummy, no bottom, no legs working. It is just your pelvic floor. So 
have a go at that one. They will be a link in here uh, for the download, the free download uh, to teach you how to do this and also a link to our video, uh, which you can exercise with me in there as well. So that is the Vagina Week. And uh, okay, a few other reasons why you might have incontinence or what can impact incontinence um, and the ability of your pelvic floor to work. So first of all, we have prolapse. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this term, um, possibly even wondering if you have it. Um, it affects up to 50% of women at some point in their life. Uh, I do tend to find prolapses occurring more in around that menopausal phase, but it can happen a lot earlier as well, particularly with the drive after having a baby to get your body back. I feel I've seen a lot more women lately who are trying to do too much too soon and that's in terms of exercise and uh, that can definitely lead to a prolapse. So just being wary of that. Um, pelvic floor exercises have been shown to really reduce your symptoms of prolapse. So 100% would get you doing uh, some exercises, whether you have symptoms or not in terms of incontinence. Okay, so the different types of prolapse, we have a sister seal. So that's where you're having um, your bladder moving into the vaginal canal more from sort of the anterior wall or the front wall of the vagina. So it's just sort of pressing into the vaginal canal. We have a um, rectus seal. So that's where you get the rectum coming through more from behind to so the posterior wall of the vaginal canal. And then you can also have a um, uterine prolapse. That's where your uterus is, is coming into the vaginal canal as well okay you can also have just the the top of the vaginal hood coming down even if you have had a hysterectomy as well so um, there's a few different versions there but essentially it's just inhibiting your vaginal canal space you can have no symptoms in terms of leakage but you might have some incontinence as well now how would you know if you have a prolapse most women I see are coming to me saying, I feel something down there, I feel it bulging or something's coming out. Um, and that's sort of the classic term that I hear. So if that's happening, absolutely go and see someone. Um, they can check it for you, find out what's happening. And I would definitely get you doing some pelvic floor exercises if that's the case. Now, why do we have prolapses? Unfortunately for women, our anatomy is just driven that way. We are, you know, we're fighting gravity the whole time, which is why your pelvic floor is so important because we're sort of heading in that downward slope. Uh, it's very different than a male anatomy. So it's, that's one aspect. And then a lot come from pregnancy, childbirth, uh, lots of different phases and things like that that happen during menopause with your estrogen levels and collagen levels and muscle um, fibers uh, just being not as elastic and not um, as strong as we age as well. So there's lots of different factors that can come into um, why we have prolapses. But bottom line is there is absolutely something you can do about it. I would start with pelvic floor exercises. If you're still struggling, get assessed. You can also use uh, some little rings and pessaries and things like that that can really be helpful in just helping with your symptoms. You do not have to suffer. So number one. Okay, so then we have your bladder health. Okay, so some tips to just improve your bladder health in general. Hydration is a big, big, big one. Okay, so making sure that you stay hydrated. There's many different ways you can calculate that, but 100% staying hydrated helps for multiple reasons within the body. Uh, you when you're hydrated, you have typically less joint and muscle pain as well. Um, but also when you are dehydrated, it can change your urine acidity levels. And when that happens, it sort of changes the signal with the bladder and the brain of when it's full <clears throat> and can lead towards that urge incontinence. So absolutely staying on top of your hydration levels. And that goes along with your caffeine, alcohol consumption as well. When we tend to have more caffeine and alcohol, it um, acts as a diuretic. So you actually then need to drink more, but you tend to drink less. So you find yourself in that dehydrated state as well. So same sort of concept, trying to keep that um, pH level of your urine <clears throat> nice and even and really helping your bladder to be able to work and function properly with its signal to the brain. Okay, and then we have relaxing your pelvic floor. Okay, so when you are urinating, relax your pelvic floor. 
if you've been sort of holding on a little bit or unsure if you're letting things go or unsure to know when your muscles are working or not, then I would suggest next time you're urinating, actually let the muscles relax and see what it feels like. I'm pretty sure you'll find that your urine stream is a bit harder or faster um, and stronger and that's what it feels like to have your pelvic floor relaxed. So once you know that, you can then incorporate that feeling when you're doing the exercises. It's sort of the same as you've probably heard the term um, when you're doing a pelvic floor exercise to think about stopping your urine midstream. Don't practice it that way. You can try it once to test it out, but don't practice that way. But that's the same analogy, just going in the, in the reverse by letting it relax. And that's how you know if it's actually relaxing as well. And a big one is avoiding constipation. <clears throat> now, there's many different ways of doing that, and I would 100% speak to your health practitioner about that. But when you are constipated, in particular chronically, there's that downward pressure again on the pelvic floor, which is making it hard for it to work. So we really want to try and avoid being constipated just to help with your bladder health in general and your pelvic floor muscle function together. Okay, so when you're trying to work on your pelvic floor, I'm just gonna give you a few tips to just try and make it a little bit easier. So I mentioned earlier some cues that you can use to try and connect with those muscles. <clears throat> so one would be thinking like you're stopping your urine midstream. Another would be imagining that you have like a straw inserted into the vagina and you're sort of holding onto it and scooping it up inside. Another one might be uh, you're trying to pull a tampon out, but you're actually holding on to it. So that's sort of the action you're trying to imagine. Again, this is all pelvic floor, no bottom, no legs, no tummy working. Uh, you can use your hands to try and feel what's happening. And it's like you're putting your hands in your pockets and then coming a little bit closer into the midline. Obviously, your tummy is relaxed there, but you'll actually get a little bit of transfer of the muscle activity through your fingertips. It's very minute. It's just like a gentle pressure. So keeping that in mind as well. Some other things that really work is curling your toes uh, and pursing your lips when you're doing the exercise as well. So those connections just help with getting your brain connected to your muscles, which is the biggest part of the pelvic floor and probably the one that people find the most challenging. So have a go at those. Uh, and I would love to know how you go. So pop in the comments how you're uh, going with your pelvic floor exercises. And if I can, I'll drop in and um, comment on them as well. Any questions, pop it in there. I'll answer them later on. And if you're after more information, I will put the link in there for the Vagina Winks, which will give you the PDF download and also access to the video where you can exercise with me. I also have programs online with an app uh, for Apple users, Android users, we have the full website, which has your backend members page where you have full access to the programs as well. So we have the Everyday Woman's program, uh, which is your pelvic floor perfection. We have a pregnancy program uh, because it's super, super important for pregnant women to be doing pelvic floor exercises in terms of trying to prevent incontinence after birth. We have a new mum program, super safe, easy to start from day one after birth. Um, it's very gentle. And we have beginners and intermediate there for people who have older children, sort of six months, eight months older. And then we have a men's program too, which men do have a pelvic floor. Surprise, surprise. So uh, making sure that you know, you're on top of all of that if you need to. Um, Happy Bladder, I'm super excited to work with Happy Bladder and the pelvic floor exercises. I feel like the two combined will be really amazing to help you and others stop suffering from incontinence. And uh, I mean, that's the whole aim of the game, right? We work together holistically as health practitioners to try and help you have the best, best life. So I'm super pumped to have been here. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I will try and respond to all the comments when I can.